Hey guys, it's Between Nerds, starring Aldo and Drew, and today is uh, a, a lukewarm episode because we are missing our co-star, Lloyd Parker, but he's being a big boy and getting his life together, so we don't, we're don't we not upset at him. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Uh, very proud of him. Shout out to Lloyd. Lloyd. He, um, uh, so, last week was delayed because... Um, Basically, Lloyd joined a accelerated MBA program, and he's yes, been sir. he's been real busy doing a bunch of p- homework. And uh, our friend just got a big boy job out in Round Rock, Texas, north of Austin. Yeah, his big boy, uh, his big boy uh, job. Uh, we're happy for him, but like Drew said, that's why we uh, got delayed on Shampoo's episode. Uh, this is now a Shampoo and domestic girlfriend episode. Accurate. And, uh, yeah, uh, last, and the reason we, uh, yeah, that was the reason, yeah, we... Well, and, and plus, so I was available starting Sunday, but Aldo... We'll did, get to that. Aldo decided, like, paying his bills is more important than this podcast, so whatever. Yes, so I, I was also, I was also got cut up with work, I was very busy. Hold on, so, where do you work? What do you do? Uh, I'm a field service engineer for a medical uh, medical device uh, company. Nerd. Medical equipment. Nerd. I heard you read Japanese in the office. Hopefully, yeah. I, I read uh, Jinglish, which is super hard to translate because some of these things will be like, turn... This is the manuals for the equipment, right? Yes. Turn off the computer slowly, slow. <laughs> and like you have some like translations that you can tell they just put it on Google and then they just drop it back into the manual. You 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 think how big these medical companies are? They don't have like they can't hire like just one full time person to translate something. I've talked I've talked to my coworkers before. I'm like, man, it's like, do you ever notice it's like you have thirty screws where you probably could have just used five? Like this is revenge from the Japanese man. This is revenge from the Japanese. But anyways, speaking of another Japanese stuff, what did we do to the Japanese? Uh. Uh, I do, watch do I, things. I watch Grave of Fireflies. Do things, yeah. <laughs> Grave of Fireflies. They did the Grave of Fireflies to us. But anyways, um, yes, we're gonna start with uh, Samurai Champloo. Samurai Champloo is a 2005. Am I correct? Samurai Champloo won our poll three weeks ago, so this is an audience chosen medium. Uh, it did come out in 2005, and I just think it's funny because uh, basically. The the, la- the episode b- before the the last episode was um, the the movie episode, right? Yes. But no. before that, we did uh, Cowboy Bebop, and Cowboy Bebop and Samurai Champloo are like essentially the same anime, but in different time periods, and that is because they're both directed by Shinchiro Watanabe. Yeah, and actually, I believe in the Japanese version of it, the three main characters of voice are three protagonists in Cowboy Bebop. So in Bebop, the, the, what characters are they? Uh, you have uh, Jet? Spike, Jet, and uh, Faye. 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 And then in Samurai Shampoo, that's... And Samurai Shampoo, I believe that's the main three of them, which M- is... Mugen? F- Mugen, Fu. Jin, and Fu. Yeah, okay. Yes. Same, same voice actor, same director. <laughs> yeah. Uh, same format, 26 episodes. And if you heard uh, the last Cowboy Bebop episode, I mean, me and Drew went really happy with it when we next saw it. The, the more time I sit with it, it's like, I'm, I'm, we were a little harsh, but I stand by everything we said. Like, I'm, I'm not going to say it's bad. It's not bad. Like, I've seen bad anime. I've seen bad movies. I've seen bad television shows. You get what I'm saying? But would I say, do I think... It should encompass like, like a classic, classic top ten list. I don't think so. I, uh, I, uh, the way I see it, I believe that the director wanted his chance at the same story again. Yeah, and I think he he did so make it better. Champloo is the direct successor to uh, Cowboy Bebop. The two thousand one Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, uh, came out probably four or five years after. Uh, but like what I was saying on Co- on Cowboy Bebop's episode, I believe that the music uh, was pushed on the episodes, and it led to the episodes not being able to convey the story better. 
They're both music driven anime. Yeah. And different genres. Mm hmm. And as, I mean, and Shampoo. I mean, Shampoo is still the same thing. I mean, it's, we're looking at 27 episodes, correct? 26. 26 episodes. Um, you know, the first 20, it's pretty much repetitive things that happen. And they, they, uh, the episodes have more episodes that go back to back. Like how the only part, the only two part episodes in all of uh, Cowboy Bebop are episodes. 15 and 16, and episodes 25 and 26. Mm -hmm. uh, Samurai Champloo from the very beginning starts having episodes that bleed into each other because episodes 3 and 4 are uh, uh, part 1, part 2, and as well as yeah. parts uh, episodes 5 and 6. Yeah. So right away, uh, Watsonabe is trying to tell you, like, hey, this is going to, like, yes, they're standalone adventures, but they're going to be more fleshed out. Yes. And, yeah. that, and that was one of my main criticisms when we were talking about Bebop, because none of those episodes seemed flushed out. None of those plot lines seemed like they like they have, they were cohesive enough to... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and um, it's... And, and yeah, you're right, I completely forgot about that. Each episode is part one and part two. It makes it way easier to watch than Absolutely. Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, also, for the audience, uh, Samurai Champloo is the samurai hip-hop version of of Cowboy Bebop. Right. Uh, it takes place... The it takes period? place in 1780. Right, right. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, we have three main characters, which is Fu, a uh, 15-year-old girl that happens to, uh, you know, get entangled with two, two Ronins. Ronin uh, being? Uh, Ronin being a samurai without a master. Uh, you, uh, you have a uh, Mugen, and you have Jin. Um, Mugen. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, before you get into the characters, you were talking about the genres. Um, so, not only the genres of music are different, but the jo just genres as uh, like as a concept are different. So, uh, we ta you talked mostly about the, the band that was immediately involved in Bebop. Yes, Seatbelts, I believe it is. Right, that big jazzy intro. Yeah, and what I think the first to Samurai Champloo is that the music was very, very pushed in 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 Samurai I mean in Cowboy Bebop when in Samurai Champloo you have good hip hop moments and they feel right. It's not like pushed to you. Be As to what Bebop made me feel that I was like, okay, seatbelts, we get it. If you're cool. It's like what CJ was talking about when we followed up with him. Um Bebop was written around the music. Mm -hmm. Uh, Shampoo feels like more of the music accents the show. Absolutely, yes, yes, yes. And with that being said, uh, I was obsessed with the the producer slash DJ that makes the intro and like a lot of the mm, second new, new, new job is new job is yeah there you go. And uh, he's in the same like early two thousands lo fi hip hop like the the founders of lo fi hip hop. You know how like you can go on YouTube now and see all these lo fi hip hop mm -hmm. channels and stations. Yeah. Like the the makers of this were Jay Dilla out of Detroit and New Jebus out of Japan, mm -hmm. cool. and uh, what, what, real fun fact about them. Well, it's not a fun fact, but it's interesting because like they were inhabiting the same musical space at the same time at different parts of the world. They died the same year. Really, they were the same age too. Oh wow, that's crazy. That is very crazy. And um, I think it's funny because I was. When I was watching the first few episodes, Karen was listening to me, and she's like, "This sounds like that lo-fi hip hop channel that you listen to." And I'm like, uh -huh. "That's what this is based off. Like, uh -huh. this is this is cool. That's crazy. That's crazy." So then you were talking about characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I was just kind of uh, trying to get the the non anime watchers. So, so the 15 year old girl. Full 15 year old girl. We have Jin, who is a more honorable. He's a by the book. He, yeah, he's Ronin. A, he's a classically trained samurai. trained on a dojo. Yeah, lived in a dojo like a like a martial arts master. Mm -hmm. And then you have Mugen, who is like you know the sloppy, careless, carefree kind of. Yeah, know? and um, they encompass different things of what a Ronin is because the the very first episode you see Jin, um, he almost fights like a feudal lord because they see him, they. He sees this feudal lord ordering his samurais to kill like a beggar in the streets or something like Just that. Just like a, a regular comment. citizen, yeah, yeah, like yeah, a regular so. citizen, yeah. And then uh, Jin, will, so Jin knows he's a badass because like it, it's told like every fucking episode, Jin killed his master. So like he know he knows he's tough shit with the sword. Yeah. So like he he's fully confident that he can just walk up to like six other samurai and just kill all of them in an instant. Mm -hmm. Like the that 
that anime trope of like a samurai unsheathing his sword so quickly mm, yeah. and, and sheathing it back in the blink of an eye. That's a that's everybody Jin. splits. Yeah, that, yeah, that's Jin. Uh, Mugen is uh, M- Mugen's fighting style is sloppy, like you're saying, but it's it goes with the music genre because yeah, because he break dances yeah, as he fights. He's he, just doing all these twirls and like you know, like he was on top of the cardboard box and just like doing some dance, but with a sword. Yeah, but with a sword, and that's when like some of these like hip hop hip hop beats come in, and it, it just feels nice. It feels good because you know what they're trying to do, and it's not like you're getting pushed this music just like oh listen to my mix you know kind of thing i was telling somebody while i was playing Yu Gi Oh yesterday that um bebop feels like it's jerking itself off in front of your face to its own genres it's just like exactly (laughs) look how this is (laughs) yeah yeah. as to like shampoo is like just stay it's like keep watching yeah it's cool it's mellow are we vibing like look i'm not i mean i don't i i don't believe we should go episode by episode because again it's the same thing as cowboy bebop what is the what is the pattern that you saw throughout this first 23 episodes i I like that um god all the first few episodes basically devolve into fu almost getting sold into sex slavery like the first 10 the first 10 episodes (laughs) every every plot line is this 15 year old girl will be snatched up by absolutely anybody and sold into sex slavery (laughs) And if she didn't have the two biggest badasses in the country with her at all times, it would have happened. Yeah, like, uh, I think it was episode five, which, oh, wait, we need to, well, I do need to talk about some of the first episodes. <laughs> when, when the when the big ogre gets killed, man, that was crazy. Like Which one was that? The big ugly dude, oh, the one yeah, that yeah. falls in love with, with a foo or it's nice to foo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Classic monster, like, hunchback of Notre Dame episode yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the beast and it's all like gentle with the girl and uh and, and he ends up dying which is awesome and <laughs> and yeah episode five she like get she meets like this this artist and the artist sells her <laughs> sells her to okay so hold on go back further episodes three and four she literally gets sold to a brothel yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so before episode five, so the whole plot of Samurai Champloo is they are going to literally traverse all of feudal Japan during the Edo period so that this 15-year-old girl can find the samurai that smells of sunflowers. Yes, yes, yes. And um, and it's uh, it's weird because on the episode that she gets sold to, like, the, the, like, the whorehouse or whatever... Um, she gets tricked into by like this psychic wannabe. He's like, you better watch out with pots. And then like some guys in the alley next to her is like they're waiting for somebody to pass so they can break this pots in front of them. It's a scam. Yeah, it's a scam. And they and she just gets pretty much pimped into like you know like the whorehouse. They make they make it seem like you break this pot and then you're instantly in debt. Yeah, it's like oh you need to pay so and so much for all this stuff, uh, which is bad. But sex trafficking is bad. <laughs> and I mean but what can I say like you said yeah so the, the main goal of this is to find the samurai that smells of sunflowers which is ironic because sunflowers don't have a smell don't have a smell yeah and which works into like the whole thing because you have all these loners pretty much it, it's about the adventure it's not about the substance exactly it's not, it's not about the it, destination it's, it's about the journey and it's about the it's about the friends we made along the way exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> like everything is but um yeah, so what what did, what episodes caught your attention? I thought the ogre one was funny to me. Yeah, so you're so you're right. So uh, episodes three and four, she gets sold into a brothel. It's up to Jin and uh, Mugen to bust her out. Yeah. And then episode five, she meets like an artist that somehow inspired Van Gogh by the way he pants by the way he painted sunflowers. So there's some there is some truth truth to that. Is but there? Not exactly. Not exactly. Uh, when Vincent Van Gogh went to uh, Holland. Uh, he did encounter some, a lot of paintings with sunflowers in them and stuff like that, but it was not necessarily the same guy. But he didn't get inspired from some uh, artist that got deported from Holland. And he, apparently he was Japanese. Not exactly the same names or anything, you know? And um, Holland's significant in terms of this period because they were the only outsiders allowed to trade with Japan. Like, mm-hmm. the Japanese government only allowed the Dutch for whatever fucking reason, mm-hmm. to trade with them. Like, no, no one else in, from any other part of the world except maybe China could trade with Japan during this period. Mm-hmm. 
And they were probably getting over getting fucking bombed. How did this... Oh, no, wait. No, that's way no, before. No, no, no. That's way before. <laughs> that's way but before. But how, how did the artist almost trick Fu into going with the people from Holland? What happened? Oh, well, she... Uh, well, he wasn't really tricking her as far as lying to her because he was a struggling artist trying to do her thing. But when the lady, the old lady, the madam of the house pretty much Is that got, who she was? Yeah. She got a hold of the artist and was like hey every girl you get here to bring to you know to bring and draw uh you're gonna you know you're gonna drug her or something and we're gonna come up and get her okay so yeah so they had like uh that's when they introduce uh that's the episode they introduce the cop who's the narrator for yeah. the entire thing mm-hmm. uh Vincent van gogh and then so the first episode we get that ties to the core plot mm-hmm. is episode six, Stranger Searching, mm-hmm. that starts off with them in a food eating contest. Yes. With the big uh, Dutch guy. With the yeah, big yeah, German with the guy. Big, he's, yeah, he's from Holland as well. Yeah. So then, um, this one, this one, so his name's Isaac. Mm-hmm. He's foreign. He came to Japan as, because he's an executive. He's like this trading executive that's like, tied to the Japanese government because mm-hmm. of, like, the trade deal they have. He is... So, foreign people aren't allowed in Japan. People know this. So, a big six-foot-eight white guy walking around Japan is going to stick out like a sore thumb. Yeah, he and he dresses up as a samurai at some point. Not as a samurai, but a noble person. Like a, yeah, yeah. Like a he, higher class person. He's got, like, fake swords on him. And, mm-hmm. like, uh, he, he was trying to escape into the Japanese mainland because he's gay. Yes, he felt he he need, he felt like he needed to leave his land to to find the Japanese were they were more accepting. Uh, yeah, his, more accepting. Yeah, more connected to you know people's feelings and stuff. Because um, he was exp- he, they were tying it to bushido, right? Which is that Japanese. It's like knightly attitude that the Europeans have. Yeah. But, like, Bushido was meant for, like... Yeah, guy-on-guy, guy, like, pampering kind of thing. Uh, Bushido was more like a code for them to live by. It reminds me of the episode of our podcast during, um... When we were talking about Madoka Magica, and we were talking about how, like, it was a love between those girls, like, a mutual respect, because you're fighting together, you're living together, and Lloyd it compared it to, like, a love for your boys, or mm-hmm. something like that. And that's, um... Yes, so that's how Bushido's interpreted in his eyes. So he came for people like minded like him. Yeah, and um, what other what other episodes did you find interesting as far as the first twenty four? Like I said, honestly, after that, there's not a whole lot because then it follows the the cowboy bebop formula where they meet somebody. They're they're who the- gets kidnapped? Who gets kidnapped? And if it wasn't because they didn't have to, they wouldn't save her, but they have to. And, yeah. But um, it, the Bebop formula is in they meet someone, they need help, it's a sad story, it's super melancholic, and then it usually ends with them dying. Like, episode 7 is about a pickpocket, stole the main yeah. cast money, but she's doing it. he's doing it because his mom's sick, and he's trying to get her better medicine, but... She ends up dying anyways. And so does he because there's a firefight with the local police. Uh-huh. And um, the probably one of the funniest or weirdest episodes in the first half is episode nine, uh-huh. which is um, it starts off with they get stopped at a at a checkpoint. Uh-huh. The main cast. Oh, and, yeah. And um, Mugen makes a deal with the police that if he can go make a delivery on like the other side of the mountain before sundown Uh that they'll let them all go but they keep Fu and Jean as collateral and so they're just waiting for him to get back but it turns out he gets kidnapped Mugen gets kidnapped by some warrior samurai and they're they're hidden in the mountain because they're growing marijuana Mm -hmm. and then uh, basically like it just turns into pure like like a comedy trip because the field accidentally gets burned and then everyone on the mountain is just tripping, and it, and it gets super, like, 1960s, colorful, yeah. uh, yellow submarine animation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and what I like, I said this is this is a lot easier to digest than Cowboy Bebop. Uh, the the samurai alone. I know I was talking to you the week of. You said that the uh, the animation didn't. You didn't like the animation. That it looked oh, too rough for you. It's um. Yeah, you're exactly right. So I'm glad you reminded me of that because I didn't take notes on it. Uh, the 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 close up still shots of the main characters' faces are really well drawn, like mm-hmm. the the standalone shot. But everything in focus, yes, quote unquote, yeah, yeah, air quotes um, in focus. But there's a lot of episodes that are just like quick, like snapshots in mm-hmm. motion, really ugly wide lines. It's, yeah, it, it just remind me again. I'm gonna mention uh, Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill, like just a big shift between panels between. Between graphics and some of the big movements and stuff like that, uh, the fights as far like I, I can see you in the fights, like some of the fights, obviously not the close up, quote unquote close up angles, um, the everything's just so blurry and you can see you can almost see the frames just skipping over each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's supposed to be so quick because they're samurai, but it's fucking twenty four frames per second. So but it, I think it looks nice because it kind of just reminds me of these. Uh, uh, you know, ink, ink fade Japanese paintings, or you know those yeah, yeah, yeah. those that start very heavy and just start losing up. And, and I know it's just I think it fits nice with a samurai thing, you know. It's just it, it's clear that it's dated. Is yeah. my point. Like it's not inherently ugly. Like there's anime coming out this this anime season that are ugly to look at. You get what I'm saying? I think it looks better. <laughs> I think it looks better than Perfect Blue, to be honest. Yeah, you did hate the animation quality of Perfect Blue. And Perfect Blue was a movie. They had a much higher budget. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, man, like... And, like I said, the, the fights, the, the the sort moves. And I think myself... I don't know. Who, whose story did you like better? Whose journey do you like better, Drew? Um, I like Fu. I like Fu a lot. Because um, every episode... It's just boring. Every episode with her devolves into, like... She is immature in the beginning. Like, she has one weird-ass wish in life, which is to go meet the samurai that smells of sunflowers. They're, no, they're trying to fuck him up, right? She has... We don't know that. The The entire time, she's just mm. saying, I need to find him. I need to oh, find okay. him. And then it's... She doesn't have a plan. She doesn't... She tricks these two, two idiots to, <laughs> uh, to come help her. And every... There's a lot of episodes where Jean and Mugen will be hit up by, like, a girl, and then she gets, like, jealous. She's like, but I'm right here. Like, why Why is he trying to go with this girl? Because there's an episode where Mugen and Jean get drugged yeah. by, 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 a, by a lady of the night, and um, she takes all their a money. A sex worker? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think she was a sex worker. That episode ended yeah. up being... Because they're... So the main cast is eating... They just get into a new place. They don't have any money. Uh-huh. But then um, a a rapping samurai comes up to Fu and is trying to hit her oh, up while his posse yeah, yeah. beatboxes in the background. And they're trying to hit her up. And then this other girl tells Mugen and Jean to go drink with her. That episode ends up that those two are married and they're like pirates-esque because like, they live by the sea with their kids. Uh-huh. So the whole time, like... Our, our main cast is dealing with other sides of the couple, and they just end up broke and screwed over and still walk yeah. into Edo. I don't know, man. The <clears throat> it, Yeah, it's cool. It's a cool story. I think I like Jin the best. I guess is the one that... I'm surprised you didn't pick Mugen, because Mugen is supposed to be... What's his face from Bebop? Is, um... uh, yeah, Spike. Yeah, he's Spike. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. It's just... I think I think Jin's kind of resonated more with me with a samurai kind of thing, you know, instead of just fucking street rat Mugen. Um, I I like it's because the Jin episodes are like reckless, and then it's cool when he finds like a like a like a purpose. So, so yeah, like and throughout and throughout the whole anime, um, Mugen he's a more of a street knowledge kind of badass samurai. He's not a breed, huh? Yeah, yeah, his his technique is sloppy, like, everything's crazy. And Jin, being a, you know, raised in a dojo kind of samurai, uh, they're both 
match each other. So they're both always... They, they, they did fight in episode one and they couldn't beat each other. Yeah. So this whole time they want to go at each other's necks. All because, the time. Because they never have a worthy adversary. Because they're so different, apparently. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Their, their styles are so different yeah. they can't even beat each other. Correct. And 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 also like how this whole anime goes and, pro- and progresses through all these uh, episodes, they kind of start realizing that they have more in common. Than they think they do. Because at the, at the beginning, they just, you know... It's about the friends we made along the way. What do I keep yeah, saying? Yeah, exactly. So then, um, speaking of Gene, one of the only episodes where he kind of acts like a grown-up for a second is uh, they go to a town that has some serial killer that's slashing people up without them having any visible wounds on the outside. Mm-hmm. And this, I had an issue with this episode because it turns out that this samurai can shoot his key out through his sword or like it's like energy oh yeah like that's how he's like cutting people through like energy blasts through Uh and it it, all of a all of a sudden it got really fantasy-y when this is like a period piece yeah and I had an issue with that that's episode 10 lethal lunacy episode 10 yeah yeah so then but okay so the episode that sticks with me the most when I think about it is the very next episode episode 11 it starts off with Gene uh, he passes by a girl on a bridge and it's clear to him that she's about to kill herself. Like, uh-huh. she's going to jump off the bridge. And Gene is on his way to a part-time job at an eel stand. His understanding is that he's going to have to use his swords as security to get some some scratch. Because uh, every episode, they're always the our main cast is always hungry. Uh-huh. Always, never has any money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're in this town. They're trying to get this job. Gene ends up making friends with this girl uh, because... The owner of the of the eel stand just l- ends up leaving to the night because it's raining. He doesn't think there's going to be business, so he leaves Gene there by himself, and he doesn't know how to run the stand. So this random lady he met helps him all night cooking eel, and at the end of the night, she's like, oh, thanks for ha- such a fun night. It's the last bit of fun I'll have for a long time. Mm. And the very next day, he finds out that she got sold to a brothel because her husband had gambling debt yeah and to settle up his gambling debt he ends up having to give his wife to, to the mom yeah who owns his brothel yeah the mom or what no the, okay it was just i think it was the daughter? brothel no it was his wife that it was, was his wife it was his wife oh, because okay. there's a certain point that he goes back over to where she's to the brothel she's working at and he asks for more money uh-huh he's like hey oh. baby give me more money come on you know you love me and then she's all mad like Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm confusing it with one of the first episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Gene ends up... Uh, he ends up getting a bunch of money together. Oh, he takes... He borrows money from Mugen because Mugen won a bunch of money in a rhinoceros beetle uh, um, competition. Race? Uh, race? No, no, no. They flip each other. So, like, they oh, raise these right, little beetles right. to just, like, flip each other and they're, uh-huh. like, strong and have, like, those big horns. Uh-huh, yeah, the poop ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's a dung beetle. Ah, oh, it's a dung beetle. Oh, never mind. And then, so, uh, Gene comes into, no, Mugen comes into a bunch of money, and Gene under, uh, and Gene borrows that money, but Mugen kind of lets him because he understands, like, Gene's got something going on. Uh Uh-huh. And so, he's, Gene's basically in love with this brothel woman, and he hatches a plan to break her out. So Gene being like it, he basically kills. A, when you think about the number of people that our protagonists kill, it's really like weird to think about because they can so easily kill every non-named character that like within like seconds. Yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous the amount they kill in, in the thing. But um, so the, Gene in this episode, yeah, what I'm talking about, Gene's yeah, yeah. basically committing a crime, trying to steal uh-huh. this brothel worker. Yeah. He kills him, which is the wife of the guy. Yeah, the yes, gambler yes. guy. So, he ends up killing a bunch of faceless guys just doing their job trying to protect a brothel. Mm-hmm. And then he whisks her away across this river to some kind of sanctuary for brothel escapees. And that one stuck to me because it was like, it's sad. Like, that one is sad. Like, Gene is so encompassed with uh, this woman he doesn't even know. Mm-hmm. And he just wants to, like, just drop everything so it's like he don't get any money he doesn't yeah he doesn't even have like a consistent yeah. roof over his head and he's get down to drop everything just to like help this woman and he knows he's never gonna see her again because at certain points he's like well if you take me to this uh sanctuary you know you won't be able to see me again because there's no like men there or something and he's like yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter like hey man um like i said i think jen 
resonated the most with me. Because, I mean, Mugen, he got, well, he got betrayed. He got betrayed by... That's next. Yeah. That's next in the plot. So, very next is uh, Misguided Me- Miscreants, parts 1 and 2, episodes 13 and 14. Uh-huh. That's where we first learn about Mugen's past. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, like, he got betrayed by one of his friends, right? Earlier than that. we That's the first time we learned yeah, about Yeah, we don't know from. about this. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He's from um, some island in, like, the south of Japan, which mm-hmm. explains why he's tanner. He's more moreno than, like, the rest of the characters. Oh, okay. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he grew up on this island that all the adults are entirely composed of... Uh, people exiled or like people being imprisoned or stuff like that. Oh, okay. So uh-huh. all the kids on this island are children of mm-hmm. weird convicts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so that's why he's so rough edged. That's why uh-huh. he doesn't even know how to read. I like the metal under the, the, the shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's how he traps like swords between his yeah. shoes with a piece of metal. Yeah, I like that shit. So then this episode we learned that he was originally betrayed uh-huh. and he they tried to capture a merchant ship. Yeah. And um, it, he he kills a bunch of people trying to escape because he gets betrayed by the guy that organized yeah. the job. And they was, were going to get killed by the... He was going to get killed by the government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was going to get killed by the local government. And, um, but he got... He, get, he didn't get framed. He just got... They were stealing that shit and they left them there. Yeah, they, it, they it, went, it went south, and his name's Mukuro. He was Mugen's, like, childhood best friend, mm-hmm. and he just kind of leaves him on this merchant ship when it goes bad. Yeah, and it goes bad, they get him, and they try to they try to assassinate him, but he escapes. But that's pretty much what we know, like, about the... Like, why he is where he's at at this point, I guess, of the story. So and, he's, he's on the run because there's a bunch of authorities that, like, want a piece of him. Yes. And, so... Oh. Go ahead. No, um, I was just gonna say. So then it ends up he ends up doing another job with for Mukudo, mm-hmm. which is in part two, and he same thing happens. Uh, Mukudo betrays him, leaves him on the ship, plants a bunch of explosives, mm-hmm. and uh, Jean, being the noble person that he is at this point, so the job goes bad. We believe Mugen to be dead. Mm-hmm. Jean, being the noble man that he is. His only dude friend in the world, besides his fifteen year old girl, yeah. he, he he goes to avenge his boy and just like murders this guy in cold blood. Mm-hmm. And Mukudo had a had a handheld gun, which I'm assuming is super rare at the time. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but what, like I said, and this it goes the stories and episodes go, and you start learning that these characters are like you know uh, developing a, a a relationship. You know, because they say they hate each other in every single episode, but it just keeps going into all these adventures that, the you know, of where they came from and where they're going. Yeah, and um, it's it, so a lot of these episodes are really good. They all they all end the same. There's some like wacky situation. There's some desperate need to, need for money, and it goes south, and the team's on some wacky adventure again. Yeah. And, oh, and and it's really nice. I really like the animations. Uh, one of the fights that I really enjoyed was a time uh, Jin encountered that samurai that wanted to kill him. Oh, oh, the, it was the same ogre episode. Was, was it? Same, yeah, it was the same ogre episode. He which was which one? Um, I think that's early in the that's early in the season. That's probably third episode or something like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, the guy that it's that is with the ogre. He puts out a head on Jin with this samurai, and the samurai and Jin fight. He's like, "Oh, you be fucking, pr- you are from a dojo and stuff like that." And I mean, all these fights like, along the way, I think are pretty badass. Well, the first time we see Jin have real troubles is episode sixteen, Lullabies of the Lost, verse one. Because mm-hmm. Jin killed the reason Jin it's on the run is because he killed his right. master. So, right. So a couple episodes before this, we got Mugen's backstory. This mm-hmm. is where we finally divulge into Jean. Yes. And um, he killed his master, and one of his old like classmates mm-hmm. is trying to get revenge on Jean on by Jin's killing by him. that. So apparently the the master when when Jin was younger when his master was around. The the government I can't remember how what what they call them like throughout the anime but like the government or like the maybe, shogun yeah the shogun but it's more like is it government or is it more like like 
like a deep state kind of government, under government, dark government kind of thing. Well, that's way later, but um, this episode, Gene refuses to explain why he killed his master. Mm -hmm. He just feels deeply remorseful for it, and he killed like an entire discipline. But we find out later, like the second to last episode, that the reason he had to kill his master uh -huh. was because um, his master had committed his dojo to being like part a, of right part of the military force something like that and like it was, yeah it was like secret police almost yeah because they were like master fighters so and gene being the upset upstanding guy he was refused to do it uh -huh. and being like the best pupil slash disciple slash um person that his master was going to leave the dojo to like his best student his uh -huh. prize student like yeah, his yeah. prime creation uh the the main villain by the end, um, who is in charge of these secret police? Uh, the Shimabara is, is Rebellion? No, is it Seiza? No. Is that what it is? Oh, no, no, no. no. Uh, Korea Kagete... Kage, Korea. 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 Kagetoki? Kagetoki. So basically, Korea is like the person on the Shogun's behalf meant to build this secret police force. Okay, so it is part of the government. Okay. So he orders... Uh, he hears that Gene's being defiant from his master, and he orders Gene's master to just kill him. He's like, if he's going to be like that, just off him. Yeah. So in the middle of the night, Gene's sleeping. His master just, like... Uh, he tries to go Last Jedi on him. Tries to uh -huh. an he, try he tries to Anakin Skywalker Ben Solo. Uh-huh. And um, and tries to kill him in his sleep, but Gene's he like he is the master at this point. He uh -huh. easily kills. Yeah, oh yeah, he can, he, they kill that shuttle. He people. easily kills him, and the the master's not even sad. He's just mm -hmm. like, you know what? You're my greatest product. I'm so proud of you. Like if I had to die like this, I'd, I'd rather be at your hands. Because mm -hmm. because because he was against it. Like uh, the people told the uh, order, pretty much the master to try to kill him. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So he was like, well, if you're if you're going to be on the wrong side of the government, then we have to kill you. So which yeah. one do you want to be? It was yeah. a no-choice situation. Yeah, and then at another point, he's like, oh, I, I, I'm glad it was you that kills me or whatever. And then, so, we that's where we learn about uh, Jean's past, and that's when we also... Um, and then, yeah, what happens with Fu? She falls down a river and is picked up by some guy it's that's escaping stupid. the law. Yeah. It's um, it doesn't make sense, but he's a nice guy and tries to help her out. And then Mugen's at like the other side of this mountain slash hill area, and he's getting mistaken for this guy. So the government tries killing him, uh -huh. and he ends up having to kill a bunch of like government, uh, government police. people. Uh -huh. um, but basically, it's just a backdrop for that. Uh, it's just a backdrop for learning more about Gene, basically. Oh yeah, that's right. Um... Fucking uh, food. They they find the 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 samurai that smells like sunflowers, right? They do. Right, they do. Not then. Not then. No, that's way late. This is episode seventeen. But the end of episode 17 is we finally find out like why Fu is trying to find the flower that smells of like sunflowers because that's her dad. Oh, okay, okay. And then so what? So episode 19 I want to talk about real quick because it's called Unholy Union and it has like really big Catholic mm -hmm. elements. There's uh, this fake, uh, he, he, he's like a priest almost or uh -huh. he's a, um, what's it called when like you're a person without sin? He's a saint. A saint? Yeah. There's this guy named Xavier the Third, who his followers call a saint and apparently uh -huh. there's this secret group of Christians, um living in feudal japan and they hi and they're hiding out in these different areas so this xavier the third has like this whole church inside a cave with these giant uh obelisks of like jesus christ and a giant cross but it turns out it's a cover for a black market weapon smuggling ring weapon smuggling. they're making guns and um that's where we, that's where we get hints that Fu's father was one of these secret Christians, because the girl, we we learn from her charm, which is a skull uh -huh. on her little sword. That when you yeah. look into it, there's like a cross in it, because this was how the Christians 
Because it was like illegal to be Christian in Japan at this time. Okay. This is how they were hiding themselves in their faith was they were holding around these little skulls with crosses in their eyes. Oh yeah, I remember though. I remember that thing. Uh, at the beginning, when she mentions, because she gets some, she gets some to join her or help her to find this samurai that smells of of sunflower. Right. Um, she doesn't mention anything of why. Mm-mm. No. We, she don't, just we, don't, says, we don't find out till like episode seventeen, like what's going on. Uh huh. But they do find him, correct? The very end. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I watched it a while ago. That's why I can't remember where these episodes are going. So then, um, the next two part is Elegy, Elegy of Entrapment, episodes 20 and 21, which is where we find this uh, a blind singer. And uh, so the group is traveling the same direction as her, and they decide to help her out because obviously she's blind and trying to cr- travel the country, and that's hella dangerous. Like, how could you even do that on your own? I don't, uh-huh. I don't understand. And we find out by the end of episode of the first part, episode twenty, that she's an assassin out here to kill Jean and Mugen. Uh huh. Because uh, Jean and this blind woman Sarah go off on their own way. Sarah asks Fu if she could borrow one of the samurai so that to help her keep her safe along her journey. And Fu reluctantly gives up Jean because she knows Mugen's going to be a little pervert with her. So uh, Jean and Sarah are walking across a rope bridge and that's when Sarah reveals who she actually is and she's actually like this master swordsman with like this giant uh-huh. blade sphere on a pole. It's like a... I don't even know how to describe this weapon. It's like a, it's just like a really long pole with like this giant blade at the end. Yeah, 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 like a spear. Yeah, like but like the blade's longer than a spear. Oh yes, yes. But yes. because she's blind and her hearing's better, it's fucking uh-huh. daredevil, so she can, she can fight better because of that. Okay. Like she's yeah. a master assassin, right? Yeah, I, I can't remember what the name of the gun is. Oh, fuck. So then, so then Jean. Um, in a desperate, because he's gonna lose the fight. Like he's about to die. Yeah. He, he's losing to Sarah. Like he's getting cut up. He br- he cuts the rope bridge so that he can escape from her. And so the very next episode, uh, Mugen and Fu find Sarah and they try to help her, but they don't realize that she's the assassin and she's here to kill all three of them. Uh-huh. So um, at a certain point, Mugen figures out that Sarah's like out there to kill him. Uh-huh. And Mugen almost dies to her because she's so strong and so brute force and she can hear his movements before, like, he's making them. Because right now what we know about Mugen and his fighting style is that he's so sporadic, it helps his moves not be predicted. But Mm -hmm. her hearing so keen that she's able to react to his movements before he's fully, like, committed to them. Yeah. So then... um, at a certain point during the fight, she realizes, because Sarah's doing all this for the Shogun and the Shogunate government, because they have her son in custody. Uh-huh. And for her to see her son again, she has to kill and act as an assassin on their behalf. So at a certain point during the fight, she realizes that her son's been dead the whole time, and she uh, she kind of just lets move and kill her. So it's it's super sad, and Mugen doesn't want to do it, and he's frustrated because he knew that if she hadn't opened herself up on purpose, that she would have, that he would have lost. Like he was about uh-huh. to die. Yeah. And so that's our first sense into. We're we're finally in the later episodes where we realize that like the government is trying to stop our gang from like a from trying to reach their destination. destination. And then we get this really weird baseball episode. Yeah. Which, do. does, which doesn't make sense because there was no baseball in the Japan in the 1600s. Yeah, and then all these fucking Americans show up. Yeah, which absolutely did not happen. They, <laughs> just, they just needed an episode there. So then the last three episodes is a three-parter. Uh, Evanescent Encounter. They, when they meet the Sunflower Samurai. We're not there yet. No, I know, but this is where it begins. So their final destina- destination this whole time has been Ikitsuku Island. Which is where uh, Fu's understanding is where her secret Christian leader father has uh-huh. been hiding out away from the government. And um, uh, that's where we learn about a trio of assassins that are trying to kill Mugen. Uh-huh. Because the in, in Mugen's original boat raiding that went south where they left him, um, it was he, the best he, he, he killed... 
three brothers, or he didn't kill them. He like maimed them. Like he mm-hmm. poked one's eye out. He made one. He turned one into a vegetable, and he turned the other one crazy or something. So all these brothers want to get revenge on Mugen, and they're acting as assassins to kill them just to kill him just on their own. Mm, yeah. And that's where we finally meet Kariya Kagato, who's um, the leader that had pressured Jean's yeah. master into working for his secret police force. That secret police force. Um, and it turns out that uh, this Kariya and Jean have the same fighting style. Like, they're using the exact same samurai style. Okay, yeah. And But Kariya is, like, the only, like, true master of the blade. Like, this is the first time that Jean's, like... Terror. Oh, fuck. Like I like there's no Oh yeah, he gets beaten. Yeah, like he gets not beaten but beaten down and shit. He gets slashed. Group. We it's yeah. assumed after like episode one that that Gene's dead. Yeah. Because but... he gets cut on the dock. Yeah. And sends Mugen to go He's help like, Fu. Uh, uh-huh. Because he because all three of them understand like Kadia is also trying to kill Fu because he wants to get to her dad since he's a secret Christian she, on yeah. the Shogun's wanted list. On the government's yeah watch list. Yeah, yeah. So we so then the once they finally get to the island, um, Mugen and Mugen. M- well, Fu gets kidnapped by the three brothers that are trying to kill Mugen. Uh huh. And Mugen just throws his sword and he's like, you know what? Let the girl go because she's like all of like half a mile from her dad's little cottage. Yeah. So he's just like, if you want to find me that bad, just let the girl go. And this is where we like really understand that it's more about like Mugen's about to die. He is positive that he's about to die. Yes. And, and but he's concerned about Fu's safety. He's concerned about her end goal right now. And uh-huh. that's so that's the first like selfless time we get Jean. We get Jin? I mean, Mugen. Mugen. Excuse me. Yeah, Mugen. Yeah, and it's uh, it's really cool. It's really, you know, uh, you know, I'm going to help my friend. And it's just this uh, relationship of people that they didn't think had a lot in common when they do have something in common. And they just go... That like like Mugen, throughout the whole thing, he's just about him. He wants to eat. He wants to do this. Um, and it's, uh, she, she lets him go. And then at this point, like you said, he's, he's thinks he's about to die, but he doesn't. Well, uh, he, so it's, a, that was a really cool fight because Mugen yeah. versus these brothers, uh, the main brother is like the middle child out of them. And he fights with like a, like a scythe on a chain. A what on a chain? So it's, it's like a scythe, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's the, like a, it's a curved blade on a chain. So he's yeah, swinging yeah. it around like a like a really long nunchuck. Yeah, it has like a handle, but it's like a small kind of like hoe thing. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. And he's they're in a rundown church, and he's like tearing this thing up like that. They're trying to show how like how sharp this blade is. Yeah. And at a certain point, Mugen breaks his arm, and so he his fighting's derailed, and like yeah. he's all trying to run around the. He, and he's just with the first one, with that one dude. Yeah, his fighting style is not allowing for him to fight in this confined church while it crumbles down. Mm-hmm. And um, on, on the other side of the island, we see Fu running to her dad's cottage, the secret Christian leader, and he's dying. He's on his deathbed, like he's on his way out. He can't, he doesn't have the strength to open his eyes to stand up. Like he just lays in bed all day and he's committed to dying at this point. And that's mm-hmm. when. Um, Kadia shows himself again because this was his target the whole time. Yeah. His order was from from the shogun. Shogun was um, to kill Seizu Kasumi and any of his relatives. So obviously he has to kill Fu. Mm-hmm. So uh, and in this instant, he kills Seizu. It's a defenseless man, super sad. When uh, what we understand so far of um, of Kadia is that he's kind of he's like Gene. He has a, a moral code, mm-hmm. but it's weird that he's willing to give it all up for the shogun because that's his boss. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, so, we believe Jean to be dead because he lost a direct confrontation with Kariya. Mm -hmm. But then we see that Jean somehow got on the other island despite being hurt. And he's he's over here now and he's ready for his rematch against Kariya. And he's losing. He's hurt. Mugen. No, No. Jean's fighting Kariya. Oh, okay, uh uh-huh. So, Jean is hurt. He's slow. He knows that he can't beat Kariya in... Like, straight out. Uh-huh. So then he has this flashback from his master of, like, this suicide attack where you open yourself up. Yeah. So that you can get stabbed, but then, like... What's that called again? I don't remember. I can't remember. But, um, the... So, 
That's exactly what he does. He's able to kill Katia, but Katia missed Jean's vital organs. Uh And so Mugen is, he's like barely able to kill the brother with the scythe hoe. Yeah, scythe hoe. With the scythe hoe on the chain. (laughs) But he cuts off his head. Yes. So the, the church falls down. Uh, they run to a beach. He's able to chop off his head, but then the the vegetable brother mm-hmm. had a gun hidden in his chair. He shoots Mugen, and then it turns out that the entirety of his chair was stuffed with um, with explosives. Yeah, like fireworks and stuff. So we also believe Mugen to be dead because oh, it he just got just blown like, up. Yeah, he yeah, just got blown up. Yeah, he yeah. just got blown up, and so and we believe Gene's about to die because he got stabbed through his abdomen. By Katia. Uh-huh. So, uh, Seizo Kasumi, the Sunflower Samurai, Fu's father, Fu's father, his caretaker, with Fu's assistance, ends up helping Jean and Mugen not die by keeping them in the cabin and, like, letting them rest up for a few weeks. Yeah. And, uh, basically the journey's over at that point because Seizo's dead uh-huh. and Fu figured out who her dad was and, um... While while still hurt, Mugen and Jean try to finish their fight. Finally, finish their fight, yeah. But the minute their swords collide, they break. Uh huh. And it, it, the the metaphor and the symbolisms there that just like stop it. They just can't. They, yeah. they can't fight each other. You know what yeah. I mean? Like they and yeah, uh, just enough. I really really like the last episode of Samurai Shampoo. Like it's really. It gets you in the feels like they agree that they're all done with their journey and they're going to split ways, even though they're all in the opposite side yeah. of the country now. Yeah, and but uh, it's it's like what's going on with Lloyd right now. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, we're friends. But we're, he's he on, he's on his own journey now. He has yeah, to he, leave. He's got to leave yeah. and go do his own thing. Yeah. Oh, that was sad. You know, and and Lloyd's foo. And <laughs> and honestly, man, like good anime. It's way better than Cowboy Bebop. Um, like we said before, uh, Cowboy Bebop, a lot of people tend to to recommend that as a really good anime to first watch. I think if you want to get engaged into something very cool, I think it will be Samurai Shampoo. It's clear that Watanabe like, learned a lot. Like He learned a lot about storytelling. Yeah, and even if he, and even if he did or didn't, I mean, he, I was able to appreciate his storytelling more in this, in this anime. It was, um, it's good. Um, Rest in peace, New Jebus. New Jebus. So then, um, do you want to start on the second part then? Uh, yeah, I mean, what do you, what do you thought about it? What do you rate it? What do you I think like about it? it? I like it. I um, like it. your overall? The animation hasn't kept up, which it really, that's the part that most, like, upsets me, I think. Because I think the storytelling holds up a little bit, even though... Like, a third of the episodes don't matter. Mm-hmm. But it's just too... It, it's... I like it a lot. It's a vibe. Like, it's it's a real, like... It's 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 pretty bitty because it's... It put it puts you in the headspace. It puts you there. It puts you in that history and that time yeah. period. But, like, the... And the music just, like... It's a wavelength. Yeah, I like it. I like it. And uh, I... I think I rated Cowboy Bebop a 5.5. I'll have to rate this a 7. 7 is pretty a high. 7. I think a 7 is good. It's real good. I But see, I don't know why Bebop has a bigger fan base than Shampoo. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I don't I, get it either. I don't understand it because, like, you we hear that. That's not a perfect score. That's not a 9. That's not a 10, right? That's not... I was calling it a perfect anime. But it's way better than Cowboy Bebop. My point is, we're, they're not, we're not going to have people yelling at us for our opinion this time. Yeah. Because it was a good anime. But not even that. Like, we're not calling it perfect. No one's yeah. going to be like, oh, this is the greatest anime of all time. Y'all don't know no, what you're no, talking no, about. Not. You didn't even watch it. That's why I said it was a 7. You still have 7.5. You have 8, 8.5. 7, I think it's good for it. Yeah. It's, it's a lot better than Domestic Girlfriend. Domestic Girlfriend. A lot better than Domestic Girlfriend? A lot. Well, yeah. Better. Yeah, I can rewatch Sean Plu again. So, Lloyd picked Domestic Girlfriend on the last episode, and now he's not here to review it. But, but um, yeah. It's, uh... It's crazy. It's, it's, uh... Is it our first romance anime? 
I think so. Yeah, it's very romance. It's like a novella, man. It's trash. It, it's trashy romance. It's so like spicy. Like it's uh, it's so crazy. It's, um, it's spicy enough to make your asshole burn. This shit's. Oh yeah, you'll be in the restroom for a while. But yeah, domestic girlfriend. Um, we have a kid, Natsuo. 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 Finn. Ha- Jin. Jinfin. Jinfin. I just, I just wrote Natsuo. I didn't like his last name. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, and uh, we start off with him. First of all, what happens in the very like first ten minutes? First ten minutes, first ten seconds, you see just people waking up in bed after doing it, which is Dude, so, Satsuko. They did it, and, and <laughs> they did do it. They did it. They did did it. And uh, Rui, 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 not too old. And Rui, Rui, the best girl, to be honest. Relax, man. They're just drawings. Rui, best girl, <laughs> but. Uh, so basically, what happens is Natsuo is uh, he he's got these two he he's almost seen as popular because his friends are so like douchey uh-huh. and such so like uh, like sixteen year old fuckboys about it like he's like, oh we're gonna go hang out with these girls we're gonna go have drinks yeah we're, let's go we're, we're, they're let's from go different movies bro they're, they're from other schools we're gonna hang out yeah. with them after hours we're and, going to Temple Town after so then what ends up happening is uh, Natsuo ends up going with them to like just a little restaurant slash cafe and he meets a girl named Rui and she's like in, instantly interested like she's across the room just like eyes him down like that that's my prey for the night and then she. They're talking to him in the hall, and I felt this part because Natsu was basically explaining that he's basically a huge nerd, and up until a few years ago, he looked ugly, had a dorky haircut, was wearing glasses, uh-huh. braces, and all this other stuff. I, that was me, like, at age 14. That's I, still I, you. <laughs> That's still I, I you. felt that so hard. And like, they, Yeah, dude, you and, got it. And basically, Rui has decided to lose her virginity to him, just, like, on a whim. And it's not even, like, a like a sexual, it's not even, like, an attraction. Yeah, it's It's just, transactional. She's like, hey, I need to... I just try to bang to dis- get out of here. Well, her logic is to be able to discuss sex properly, I need to know what it is. So she's just, I've decided that you are going to teach me how to fuck, and we're going to go. <laughs> yeah. So she... Yeah, she just goes and has a, you know, a, a fuck with this guy that she just met, and, um, they, uh... Yeah, they and have a fuck. Yeah, they just have a fuck. <laughs> they go have a quick fuck. And, and but anyways, it's I, super awkward because both of, both of them are like, "Is that what it was supposed to be?" She describes it. I'm, I'm assuming his first time was terrible because she describes it as like, it, it, "I didn't feel anything. It, it was just more like, oh, so that's what it is." And yeah, <laughs> and throughout this whole time, uh, Natsu, he is. In love with his teacher. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's super so, important. So the sen- so his teacher is basically introduced first because in the school, he's yeah. in- she's interacting with his friends, Hina, and Hina. and sh- and it's described like how much he has a crush on her. Yes, and apparently they had this interaction before. Or on something. the uh, yeah, on the roof. Oh, no, he, no, yeah. He, he writes short stories on the roof of the school, and one yeah. time she went up there, and and it's like. It's romance fiction. Yeah, they just had like a little ooh, flirty moment. Yeah, yeah. And uh, anyways, so he just had sex with Rui. This is how the the first episode begins. Uh, and they 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 go back home from a day at school. Uh, he uh, it seems that Sats uh, the 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 Natsu, Natsuo hasn't been talking to his dad for a while. That the, that the dad comes into his room. He's like, hey, son, how'd it go today or something? He's like, oh, things were going, things were moving so quickly. I didn't have time to tell you, uh, but I'm getting remar- remarried. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which, that makes no sense. Like, imagine yeah. your dad just out of nowhere just say, hey, I'm getting remarried. He, like, knocks and he's like, what do you want? Like, they haven't been talking. But, yeah, the dad is like, yeah, oh, shit, things have been going so quickly. I'm going to remarry and they're coming to dinner today. <laughs> like I invited my soon-to-be wife, his fiance, and, and and her two daughters. Yep. To to uh, come have dinner. To with come us. have dinner with us. So get ready. So then they get there, <laughs> and it turns out that <laughs> they open soon, the door. His soon-to-be stepsisters are the teacher he's in love with. 
and the girl he just lost his virginity, virginity to. Yeah. <laughs> so all three of them are just standing in the doorway, looking at each other super weird, be like, uh. <laughs> so this is the first episode. Yeah. Very and like, end, uh, end of episode one. End of episode one. Sisters don't know this. Sisters don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, he, that Kina this. doesn't know that Rui hooked up with uh, Natsuo already. Yeah. So, so then they move in together. They also, move, they also move. quick as fuck. And then yeah, they move it together. Next, that, that, the next night was the first night they're going to all sleep together. So <laughs> not together like in the same bed, but like in the same house together. So episode two, episode no, two. no, no, hold on. The end of episode one. Oh. So every episode ends on a cliffhanger. Oh yes. So the end of episode one is they're living in the same house together. Hina turns out to be a drunk and loves beer, like my friend Aldo. She's Bannon. not a drunk. It's imp- a- it's implied that she likes drinking a lot. Yeah, but I like drinking a lot. You like drinking a lot, by the way, I'm Drew. Sober eight days. He's been sober eight days. He wants to take a month. Cheers to that. But yeah. I'm not. I'm drinking. I'm drinking of what he called six ounces of liquor, which I don't think it is. And then, um, so Hina falls asleep from drinking on the couch. And Natsuo, being the little pervert he is, tries to, like, steal a kiss while she's passed out. But Rui is in, like, the just door. Just catches him. Yeah, yeah just like, catches him red-handed. Yeah, just looking at them. End of, end of episode one. End of episode Cute one. Cue music. He- uh, and, uh, spicy already. Like, I don't know how much spice was in episode one. Like, like this dude, it's on a crazy situation. Yeah, he still wants to try to sneak yeah, a kiss. Yeah, he's still trying to sneak a kiss from like, this dude, passed out On girl. the living room, you know? It's crazy. Anyways. So then, it's, episode two starts. It ends up not even being a thing because Rui's like, think, oh, she passes out like this all the time. I think first episode, uh, something was mentioned about uh, the relationship between Natsuo and uh, Hina. Uh, the, the, she, he caught her crying in the, in the, in the, in the roof of the building. Oh. And like, she was like, oh, I'm doing what adults do or something we like that. We all just cry in private at work. <laughs> <laughs> Which lets us know that we cry at work. And and yeah, like she's crying up uh, up up there and he's a student, that's a teacher and like he's trying to hit up on her but she's like, "No, I'm I'm going through what adults go through or something like that." Which trying to like imply that he's a little kid, you know? Which and is true. He's sixteen. Correct. And, and this correct. implied to be the year before. So, he's but he's 15. in the most despised situation a sixteen-year-old can be. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so then episode two starts. The, the Rui not even Rui catching him trying to kiss Hina ends up not even being a thing. She doesn't even care. Yeah, and just takes Hina so, to her room. So yeah, Rui Rui is uh, she reminded me of Yuki from from uh, Zuzumiya. Yuki, the 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 alien oh, android. She's a hard ass. She's real tactical. Lecture, she's awkward. lecture club, awkward blue hair. Like I was <laughs> like, that's just Yuki. Yuki had white hair, didn't she? No, Yuki was the blue hair. Uh, whatever. And then Anyways, okay, so yeah, she's very awkward. And the episode con- uh, the episode starts going, and uh, uh, Netsuo helps her get friends or tries to kind of coach her and be like, hey, stop being a hard ass. Well, yeah. Okay, so in episode two, we find out that Rui transfers schools. They're cl- they're they're not um in the same class, but they are in the same grade. And she's she's implied to be cute, so like she's really popular at first, right? Mm-hmm. But she's really awkward and kind of rude, so she keeps turning people off. And then uh... <laughs> halfway through the episode, they watch each other take a bath. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So they uh, <laughs> so uh, Natsu they're at the was, house. They're yeah, the, Natsu was they already come back from the house. Natsu was already taking a bath. Yes. Rui just walks in, but as naked. No, he's he the the how the episode goes is that he's getting ready to take a bath. And there's uh, <laughs> you, there's nothing in play that she's there or anything like that. He's just getting ready to go take a bath. He walks in and she's already in the bath. So he's like, oh shit, my bad. Yeah, and Rui Rui being that. The weirdo she is, she's like, yeah, come in. I mean, she's like, we've already seen each other naked. Yeah, like, why just, might as well just take a bath in the same room with me. Anyways, at this point, I'm telling you, they're in the same house, living as stepsisters and stepbrothers. But Louis Natsuo already already had sex, and then you have Natsuo being in love with the other with his sister, him. which is at the other room, like she's in the other room, and yeah, that happens. What else happens in episode two? 
Uh, all I wrote was Hina sat over a man. She sat over a man? Yeah, that's all I wrote. Episode 2. I have three points in episode 2. Rui transfers schools. They watch each other bathe. Hina sat over a man. <laughs> Hina sat over a man. Oh, but, um, so, but we find out who that is in the next episode because, um, we find out that Hina is, like, dating slash hanging out with a married man. Oh, yes. And Natsuo, like, confronts Hina about it in, like, a super dramatic and confrontational way, which, like, it's none of his business, like... Yeah, yeah, it's none of his business. Is that supposed to be his... Well, he's very in love with her, but, like, yeah, it's none of his business as far as regular people goes. Yeah, so she's, like, crying about this guy, and he tries, like, arguing with her, like, hey, stop it, he, she... He's married. Why do you care? So then she tries to, like, jump on top of him. I literally wrote, uh, they kiss and she mounts him. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Hina and Natsuo kiss in her bedroom. Because he's talking to her about her crying over this married guy. And then she just kind of mounts this him. this is episode three? This is episode three. This is episode three. Isn't the episode three when Natsuo, like, leaves for three No, days? no, no. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Uh -huh. I'm getting there. Oh, okay. So they kiss. She mounts him. And then he's all nervous and scared because he's got, like, this 25-year-old woman on top of him. Uh -huh. And 25. I'm 27. Oh, we're, we're both right. We're it's both like, 27. And then she's like, see? You're, you're just a kid. You're still scared. Oh, yeah. and she, like, agrees. And she's, like, molesting a child. This like, guy's, like, just quivering. Yeah, he's just, like, <laughs> shaking. So, so that... He, He's so upset by that whole interaction. He leaves. He goes and stays with his best friend and, for a little while. And the parents think like he doesn't agree with like the 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 remar like the remarriage. Yeah, yeah. So they're about to get a divorce yeah, because he's like being he so dramatic and just ran away from home. And uh, so the best friend's name is Fumuya. He's living with Fumuya for a while. And so that's the end of episode three. He yeah. runs away, and that's the spice for he, the episode. Yeah, he he comes back. He comes back, and he's like, oh, no. No, no, no. Not, we're not there yet. So, episode four. Uh, episode three. He comes back in episode three. No, he doesn't come back. He runs away in episode three. So, then episode four, uh, Rui is, like, going around town trying to look for him. And that's where she finds uh, she finds him at Fumuya's place, and she meets Fumuya. And they kind of, like, they're living away from home for a while. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, and they, and they come back after that. Yeah, yeah and right, then they right, come right, back right. into each other. You're right, you're right, you're right. So, um, so episode four, uh, Rui and uh, Natsuo are now a lot closer, and they're friends now. They hang out, right? Yes. So they're both stalking Hina for an extended period of time, trying to figure out, like, who this married guy is. Yeah, which is Like, where she's going, something. what she's doing. Yeah, yeah, it was like shoot. Yeah, C yeah, they're trying to figure S -H -U -U. out. S H Yeah, they're trying to figure out who Hina is dating because she was crying because uh, Satsu Satsu uh, Natsu uh, caught her crying or whatever. So they're trying to figure out who this guy is. Yeah, yeah. So it ends up being that they're just hanging out at the cafe that Fumuya works. The best uh, friend Lamont. Yeah, yeah, Lamont Lamont's or something like that. Yeah, they're just hanging out. They're like, oh, we don't know where she went or like who she's hanging out with, and she walks in with him. Mm -hmm. Hina walks in with Shu. And so the four of them, Shu, Hina, Rui, and Natsuo are having a little chat. And they're like yelling at these two because they're like, he's married. What are you doing? You know better. And Rui throws water on Shu. Yeah, they're very upset. But like at this point, I see that Natsuo is like riding the opportunity to, yeah, to yeah. be disgusted at this guy. Because obviously this guy loves... That's his competition. Yeah, that's his competition. So he's kind, of, he's kind of being, he's taking advantage of the situation to be like, nah, nah, this is not right, blah blah blah, and yeah, they're very upset, and he gets very upset. Then Rio ends up like, you know, splashing water on him, which in Japan is a big deal. Yeah, well, it's shocking. I don't know. Yeah, it's rude. <laughs> and then, not, and then, uh, we get a flashback of what happened to Natsuo's mom. Mm -hmm. She died. Yeah. Real sad. Yeah, she died. She Did they say from what? Cancer? Just... Yeah, I think it was cancer. Yeah. Because, yeah. Okay, so the episode five, we're introduced to the to that hoe over there, Momo. Momo, the green hair girl? No, Momo's the orange haired one with the oh, ponytail. Oh, yeah, 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 Momo, yes, 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 yes. So then, um, she ends up, so Rui makes a new friend named Momo. She turns out to be the, the class thought. And, uh, Natsuo saves her from getting hit by a bike when they're all hanging out. So now Momo has this huge crush on Natsuo. She invites Natsuo over to her house to, like, 
How did she even word it? Was she even coy about it? She was, or was no, she just like, I think she was like, we should go to just be alone or some shit like that. Yeah, yeah, saying. just come over later yeah. so we can be alone. And he knows exactly what that is. And he <laughs> and he's still upset about like Hina shutting him down and like teasing him that one day and calling him a child. Showing so, up with a backpack. So, so he's trying to like get lost in, an, in, in inside another woman <laughs> so that he can forget about Hina. <laughs> and... Um, he when when she's taking off her shirt, this isn't hentai. There's no nudity. No, this is no not a hentai yeah. because there's no nudity. But when she's taking off her shirt, he sees like horizontal cuts on her wrist as yeah. if she's committing self harm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's just and, and then he cooks for her. <laughs> yeah, he cooks for her. He does the simplest thing and then uh-huh. cooks for her. Uh, <laughs> and so then, first half of this episode, second half of this episode, Rui ends up being sick. Which is why, mm-hmm. like, Natsuo is blowing off Momo on, like, these dates she's trying to have. Mm-hmm. And so, Rui is so sick that she can't administer her own medication. Uh, Natsuo calls Rui's mom and asks what to do. She says that she has a suppository in the house, and he needs to give it to Rui. Mm. So then that scene is super weird, because Natsuo is giving his stepsister, who is the girl he lost his virginity yeah, to, too. a suppository. Yeah. And she's just like, don't worry about it. You can do it. I'm just going to turn <laughs> over. And then... <laughs> uh, it's just... It's okay, so much this crit, is, so this much is, spice. This is the worst episode, guys. Right? The right? suppository, that's what yeah. did it for you? No, no, no. Not the, <laughs> okay, I'm not going to say the worst, but this is where... <laughs> it climaxes as far as, like, weird. weird. It's yeah, super like, weird. weird. Yeah. Everything else is like a novella, but like here, it's just like, come on, man. Okay, anyways. Uh, episode six wasn't that uh, interesting as far as like our main... Our main cast is the three... Lo- is the love triangle. It's, yes, love triangle. It's Natsuo, Rui, and, and Hina. Hina. But all that happens in episode six, basically, is he joins the literature club. Yeah, yeah she joins the literature, cl- the literature club. Uh, the, is that American introduced at this point? No, no, no that's later. Mm-hmm. We learn later? A, we learn more about the gay bartender in this episode. Oh, that's he, right. He was a leader right. of a Yakuza group. Which the is son the, of the leader of the Yakuza yeah, group. Yeah, yeah, which makes him a big deal because the Yakuza, Yakuza is like the Japanese mob. Yakuza means mob, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So then... Um, uh, we come to episode seven. Um, uh, Hina and Netsuo are getting along. They're just She's having try- a good time. Yeah, but yeah. this guy's kind of still kind of playing the. Well, he still likes her, so yeah. he's still trying to. He's trying to. Yeah, so they're getting along. They're you know they're... don't they go to the beach or something? She takes them like out yeah, of town but... for like a road trip. No, but they go somewhere before. I can't remember where they went before, but they have a good time, anyways. But yeah, they they go to the beach. Uh, and they they talk to him. Uh, they talk about how uh, she met Shu or how Shu, uh, you yeah. know. Oh, they're at like a cafe or something. They're eating. They're eating, no, well, and she's explaining that like how she met Shu because Shu was her chemistry teacher. Or yes, some, her science teacher back in high school, back in, in school, which shows like yeah. which is a direct reflection on like their cur- her relationship with Natsuo because <laughs> she's a teacher. So, anyways, the teacher. It's not directly hitting up on her. He's just being nice because she was being... She was a loser. She the, was the, being called too cute and nobody wanted to hang out with her. The girls were slut-shaming. Yeah, slut-shaming. The, the girls in her class were slut-shaming and that wasn't nice. And so that was it, not nice. It hurt Hina's feelings. Anyways, the teacher's being nice to this girl because she's, uh, she's eating alone, whatever. Anyways, they kept it professional. And then later on in life, when she was a teacher, they met up again. And that's how they ended up kind of dating. Yeah, hell yeah. But this guy is married. Hell yeah. And and then Hina also explains like that her dad had an affair and that's what happened between her mom and her dad. Yeah, and that's how. Yep, yep. And what else? Uh Ru- we have- Ru- oh, Rui uh, comes no. at Natsu. Wait, 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 okay, wait, 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 wait. Wait. Not uh Natsuo gives gives the story that he's writing for the literature club. Oh yeah. He he gives her to to uh Hina. Mm-hmm. Hina reads and is like, oh yeah, is this how you want it? Is like, do you want it romantic? And like she does this whole metaphoric thing of walking into the beach and drowning because that's what metaphor metaphorically it's gonna happen. <laughs> Uh, I, like in life, that part was way too corny for me, bro. I you know, could, like, I, could, I hated that part, and it, it was weird. It's like, well, if like they start, so he's like, oh, that's how you want it romantically. He grabs, she grabs his hand. They walk into the beach, and 
they walk into walking, the ocean water. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're yeah. walking into the ocean water. They're they're getting deep, and then at one point, Natsu Natsu is like, "What are you doing?" Is like, "Well, this is what you want. If you want us to be romantically involved, we're pretty much." Uh, killing we're... ourselves socially. She was just thinking about herself. She was thinking about her career. Which, yeah. like, now you're picking your career? Like, now you're choosing to focus on your job? Come on. Anyways, it was weird. So then, uh, they go back. Rui doesn't realize that he's been, like, trying to mack on mm-hmm. Hina. Yeah, there's no... Re- Rui goes into Natsuo's room, and, and she's like, hey... Kiss. Yeah, yeah, she's like, hey, we didn't kiss that first time <laughs> we met. Which... All- I don't even know how they hooked up without kissing, like... I well, don't... it's because it was just a fuck, remember? Rui just wanted to get it over with, pretty much. I only know how to make love, although, I'm sorry. Hey, hey. I'm man, sorry, it's okay. bro. It's okay. My bad. So, uh, so then she's trying to mack on him, and then... Do, do they end no. up kissing? Yeah! Did she, she was She was like, hey, so we didn't kiss, and I think that's pretty good... That's a pretty good, important part of it. Um, but... Let's kiss... And they end up kissing. So then they kiss, and then is is this like the le- and is it kiss- late? Is it late later that night that he walks in on Hina? It's later that day that <laughs> Hina's in her bedroom. He hears like maybe she's in pain because he hears moaning, and then he ends up cracking over her door, and she's masturbating while whispering um. the name Shu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he just kind of watches her masturbate. At <laughs> end of episode seven. He na 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 na. So this little pervert's just like watching her masturbate, yeah. and then um, episode eight opens with a uh, he. Not only is he watching her masturbate, he like drops his notebook. Uh-huh. And she hears it, runs outside, and he's like hiding behind the stairs. Yeah. Like, I just, <laughs> <laughs> so she obviously heard something and saw his notebook. And, and this this is the episode the Americans introduced you were talking about. Alex. Uh-huh. Episode eight. But what um uh, before what does she get uh what does she get um uh Rui gets gets upset uh Natsu for something and he has to apologize and they kiss again? Oh, I don't, all I wrote was Rui and Natsuo kiss. I don't even remember why she was yeah. She was just making up reasons to kiss her. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's just like, if you're, if you're trying to apologize, you better do it right or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> she's just trolling for Diddy. Like, and she's then, not, like, subtle. And then, and then Hina walks in on them. And then Hina walks in on them. Uh, Hina walks in on them. <laughs> and that's how the episode of eight closes. Is it? Yeah, episode eight closes. No, 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 no. Yeah. So then Natsu... I, I have a bunch more notes oh, for episode what? eight. Natsuo confesses his love to Hina. Hina moves out because she's uncomfortable. Oh, yeah, yeah, But she gave him a key to her apartment. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. So after they catch him next day, Hina announces that she's moving out. And uh, they both think is because of what Ru- Rui and Natsuo think Hina's moving out because of them. Oh uh, yeah, because of what she saw. But then she talks to Rio and and Rui. I mean, yeah, yeah, Rui. They talk and they uh, Hina asks her, "Is like, oh, you? Why'd you do this? It's like, oh, it's because I think I like him, or blah blah blah." It's like, well, what would they say? And anyway, she lets her do whatever she wants, pretty much. So then. She give she gives Natsuo the key to her place. He goes over and they kiss. End of episode nine. He na, 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 na. Episode nine. So that episode ten, it, Hina and Natsu are basically playing like like a do- lovey dovey couple right now. Like they're they're eating together, cooking each up together. Dude, at one point, I thought it wasn't gonna be that key. I thought it was gonna be something else. No? Like at, at one point, I thought it was gonna. I don't know. I don't know why. It's because. This romance anime is so weird, and I just thought he was gonna get fucked over with a key. I don't know. I just thought it was gonna be weird. Oh, but if he ends up getting a key. He goes. She's asleep. They make out. They. Oh just... yeah, she was asleep. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. About... So she's asleep in her apartment. He breaks in yeah. without announcing himself into her apartment. She's sleeping, and he's just like at her I, at her like, bed, just staring at her. her. Yeah, yeah, yeah just her. staring at her sleep. And she doesn't like freak out, and she's just like, "Oh, whoa, oh, oh shit! I oh, thought I left oh, my oh. door unlocked." <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so Hina and Natsu, are and at this point, at this point, at this point, Nat- Natsu, he's like, "See, 
I'm not scared anymore or some oh, shit. <laughs> not to going back to the whole not thing. Not oh, no. Cringy, cringy and so funny. It's so funny. <laughs> the dialogue's hilarious. See, I didn't even write any of the cringy dialogue down because I'm just trying to like tone it out. Like <laughs> So then, was the he and Natsu are basically in a relationship, but then at school, Natsu will find, falls down some stairs. Oh yeah, because that girl in the in the red in the green. Oh, we didn't explain this. So the, yeah. he joins the literature club, and uh, turns out their teacher is like some crazy good. Yeah, uh, he's publisher. like an, yeah, he's an he's an author. He has like a bunch of published works, and like so we know Natsuo's like only hobby is he has been writing because that's how he met Hina. Like, he casually writes, like, romance stuff. Like Do you think that they were kissing? They were kissing, right? Who? The teacher? I don't, the girl in the group? I don't think so. They said, I, that, I, they said something she was trying about to, the... the... The president of the literature club and the professor and the teacher in charge of the literature club were seen, like, air quotes, kissing at first. But when they turned around, she was like, oh, I was just trying to get an eyelash out of his eye. <laughs> Bullshit. I don't, I don't think so. I don't... Yeah. That's fine. So, anyways... The president of the literature club pushes uh, Natsuo down some stairs and he breaks his arm. Mm -hmm. No, he breaks his leg. Leg, leg, leg. Oh, that's so gross. Imagine, oh, yeah, that's right. He, imagine how... The, so then uh, Rui's taking care of him, but she's still trying to, like, mack on him the whole time, too. Like, yeah. Oh, so, she, at one point, she was like, and she, I'm happy, I'm happy this happened to you. So, so like, that so, she can so, take so, care of him. So she can spend more time with him. Wait, she doesn't and know she that... she kisses he, him again. Yeah, yeah, she doesn't know that he's been hanging out with Hina like that. Yeah, Because yeah. this whole time, she he lied and said that he's been hanging out with Fumuya. His best friend, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So then there's a really... Another cringy bath scene where Rui has to give Natsu, Natsuo a bath a because he can't yeah, bathe yeah, himself. Bad. Yeah, true. And she grabs his dick. Oh yeah! She grabs uh, his wiener. Where's the soap? Where's the soap? And she and grabs his wiener. Grab his wiener. Oh, <laughs> and he's man. like embarrassed. And uh, it's just going so crazy at this point. And then, oh, so yeah, uh, uh, Rui believes that he's been going with a with a friend all this time. So uh, I think it was a Lamont where he asked a guy, and he was like, "Oh no, that's not happening." Or yeah, something. she she went to Lamont and was talking to Fumuya, being like, "Oh, I ain't seen that so in a while. He's been hanging out with you a lot." And Fumuya, and Fumuya spills the beans on accident. He's like, "Well, I haven't seen that so in forever." Like, yeah. So she finds out she's she, he's not really going to the the best friend's house, but she's smart enough to realize where he's been going. Because uh, everybody knows it's spicy. Because Natsuo's perver perverted ass is at Hina's. She they're eating, but she's all he's all trying to mack on her like while instead of eating because he can't keep his hands to himself and he tries like he tries like uh, he tries hooking up with her like right then and yeah. then the doorbell rings and then Hina goes and answers the door but it's Rui and yeah. she and she sees that Natsuo is there yeah and then. Uh, Natsuo runs out and he's like, Hina, it's not like that, but it is like that. And then she slaps him in the rain. Yeah. Cue song. <laughs> right, yeah. And then what happens after that? Uh, field trip. Is that the beach episode? Yeah, we finally a get a episode. Bit e beach episode. Second last Anyways, episode. Anyways, so yeah, she ends up going to uh, Hina's house and to find fucking pervert crippled out. Uh, uh, not so well. Um, <laughs> on the floor, and then she comes in, and she just runs away. So they're mad. Everybody's mad at each Everybody's other. Everybody's mad. At each other. He Rui's mad at both Hina and Natsuo. Hina feels bad, so she's not gonna hang out with Natsuo anymore. Um, and yeah, yeah. So the that's entire where... time, dude, I'm like, oh, is that spicy? <laughs> I, I, I remembered when, because it's my second time watching it. I remembered when I heard the doorbell. I'm like, oh fuck! Like, like I know what's gonna happen. Like, I stood up in my chair, like, oh fuck, no. <laughs> yeah, man. Like you're it's... just passively watching, and then you just remember, oh shit! Like it's, it's so about funny. to get spicy. It's so funny. It's so funny. Yeah, you said you watched it a second time, and you said it didn't hit as different because you already know what's going on. Yeah, the earlier, like, it's so cringy. Like, I'm <sighs> like. When you originally watch it, you just want to binge through it because every episode ends on a cliffhanger and it's so spicy that you're just like, I, now I have to know what happens next. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah. And, and then, uh, 
Uh, so yeah, so it's just funny to watch it. Honestly, it's a romance, but it's so well drawn. The the animation, it's it's really good. Uh, the story, I like this, I said, I think it the still spicy. frames are good. Yeah, yeah. Like as far as animation, like fluid animation, I think it's ugly. I think uh, it's so animation? ugly. But like it, it wants its well. It's frames mostly to, like, well. It's mostly still because they're like the spice. The, the spicy moments are very well drawn and stuff. You know. Yeah. But like the everyday stuff, like the class and like all the stuff. They, that's the where dinner. they were cutting the budget. Yeah, that's when they cut the budget. But all these scenes where it gets super spicy is really, really well drawn. The lips, the 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 eyes, the teeth tears it's ridiculous <laughs> it, they try it's to make ridiculous. it as expressive as possible just in the faces so then uh the beach episode what, what blew me what what like hurt my head a little about the field trip episode was uh the whole class like flies to the beach together and they were all like, separated at one point what, what, what school together? could afford this what how could a whole like class of students like afford plane tickets like that man let me tell you our school system sucks man yeah, American you know, sucks. we're like what thirty now, probably. There, yeah, that that school has money. You know, so then where's okay. Japan in the school fucking ranking system? I'm pretty sure it's a one, two. I'm sure it's pretty high. Yeah. So then, okay, so they're at this beach resort slash town on the other side of Japan. Natsuo is on the beach and sees a bunch of rings, and he decides to be a little weirdo and buy a ring for Hina. Oh uh, yeah. And, uh, I, anyways, before, I think it was before this, uh, Rui and they make up. They, oh, yeah, Hina and Rui they, make up. Yeah, yeah they yeah. make up, so they're like, hey. Well, uh, she's calling her sister a slut at first because, like. Yeah, she, but Hina, what did she say? They were something super corny there. H- Hina's wearing, like, a ba- like a like a bikini, and Rui's like, don't you think that's a little indecent to be wearing as a teacher or something like that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, uh, fuck, what, what else does she say? She says, oh, I don't care what you guys are doing something something she says that she doesn't care that what she's doing you know pretty much what she told her she it, she basically is telling Hina that they're coming to the understanding that like she's not gonna be mad at Hina she's hooking up with Natsuo but like she still likes him too yeah yeah something like she's that she's agreeing to the love triangle yeah she's like I'm here <laughs> I know you're there and yeah made, that, made the best woman win so anyways yeah Natsuo ends up buying like a little sideshow fair little ring <laughs> He's gotta, post. He's, he's gotta give his girl jewelry bro yeah and gets her like a little ring so he goes to Hina's room yep goes to Hina's room they start making out they start making out for like half a second she's try- she tries being like no we can't do this yeah <laughs> stop it that's real but yeah. then she gives in they have sex they have this, sex they finally have sex there's fireworks going on in the background mm-hmm. it's beautiful <laughs> and then so then near the end of the episode they're back in school Hina gets called to the principal's office and the principal shows them a picture, shows oh, her, shows picture, and it's a picture of her kissing Natsuo. Yeah, cue and music, cut, spicy, spicy. She's caught. Spicy. They're caught. The relationship has been exposed by the school. Well, not exposed fully. So at this point, they're telling her, "Hey, yo, what's this picture of you hooking up with a student?" She's like, oh, "You know what? I'll take my punishment. Uh, I'll transfer school. I'll, I'll transfer schools. Please don't make it go public. Like if it was like the whole town was like invested in this fucking teacher, as far as news wise. But I guess she was just don't make it public. Whatever, I'll move. So she ends up she transfers schools. Transferring schools. She moves from her apartment. Moves from her apartment. Leaves Natsuo dangling like a dangalon. Yeah, and he's sad. He's he, sad. Like, uh, and it's winter at this time, which is like, everyone's sad during the winter, right? He pretends to be asleep. Yeah, well, he's depressed, bro. He's super lethargic, doesn't have any energy, doesn't his talk to anybody, smells. doesn't leave his room, he's not showering, he's not eating. Yeah. Like, he's like, depressed, depressed. Good old depression. And uh, he, at, at a certain point, he goes to Lamont. Uh-huh. And the the Yakuza bartender like they're like bathes a, with him. They're like in a bathhouse. Yeah, they he, So it's not in a restroom at your house. It's somewhere public. Yeah, but that like you go and bathe yourself with it, that It's guy. also but it's seen as a big deal that he's bathing in a public bathhouse at all because he's a Yakuza. Like his back is tatted up. Yeah, you know so in Japan in Japan tattoos as far as anybody visible tattoos in your sleeves or something like that they must be covered because a lot of places will not let you in with exposed tattoos right so like him being in a bathhouse he can't have a full tatted back like that Mm -hmm. and he wanted to get it removed because of what his dad was like 
and but he decided to forgive his dad and, and, and that's why he tells Natsuo just to keep moving on like yeah. you gotta just deal with your shit and just keep moving on so then Natsuo starts writing a book yeah oh yeah throughout this whole thing the through his depression bout he's been writing yeah he's been writing cause so he's really into the literature uh, club and he writes the stories and the the teacher from the, for the club was like, oh no, you shouldn't be doing this because of the current story that initially that like, he showed a uh, Hina, mm-hmm. but then he gets encouraged to draw something different every week. He starts getting awards and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah. So at a certain point, the teacher like submitted. He start so he'd been doing like these literature lessons, like you're talking about, like writing a different story every week. But then in this big depression bout, he started writing a whole book, and the literature teacher, without his knowledge, submits Natsuo's book to a to a competition and it wins a prize and so he gets his badass award he just got first place and didn't even know he was submitted into this competition and then he has his trophy he's walking into his house and he sees like hina with his back turned to him oh yeah but then he goes to kiss her no it turns around and (laughs) see see she has red eyes yeah, so it's Rui. It's yeah, Rui it in a way. Oh, shit. So then Rui's sad all over again because... Uh, so she's sad. He, she's crying. So Natsuo goes back and he's like, my bad, I'm sorry. I'm so in love with your sister. What the fuck? And and, so, and basically the family knows. The whole family knows at this point that like uh, Natsuo and Hina have been hooking up. Like yeah. even the parents know. And Rui's just like, I don't care. I just want to be with you, Natsuo. And then that's like the end of the anime. But then in the after credits, yeah. we get a scene that Hina's at her new school and she cut her hair. Yeah. To seem like less attractive, I guess. She cut yeah. her hair. But she still has the ring that Natsuo gave her. Yep. End of season. End of season. It's so crazy. And Rui mounts Natsuo at one point is like, oh, I'm I'm here to fucking let's go. I, I play uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! with a uh, a guy that reads the manga for Domestic Girlfriend. Because yeah. when this was coming out, like, week to week last year, I was watching it, like, the, at the I was watching the simulcast, yeah. you know what I mean? And uh, he, he was explaining to me that, like, the manga is still ongoing. Like, the, it gets spicier, bro. <laughs> like, so that gives me hope that maybe we can talk about a season two at some point. Hopefully. I'm down to, hey, it's a, it's a funny story. Did it's you just, like it? I liked it because it's just funny. Because it's, like I said, you have to get over the fact that it's, animated to see what the fuck they're trying <laughs> to do. It's not hentai. And it's just so weird. It's not hentai. It's so weird. Like, But it's funny. To me, it's funny. It's a romance and it's just spicy as a novella. Anybody that's Hispanic or anything, you know what a novella is. It's, it's a soap just, opera. Yes, yeah, soap opera. It's, it's pretty hilarious and I liked it. I like. I like, had fun watching it. Would you recommend it? No. <laughs> that's a no. <laughs> to if I knew what the, if I knew some what the, uh the, the the preference of the person I'm talking to. Yeah. Yeah. So what what did you like it? I liked it. I wouldn't recommend watching it twice because I was I was really miserable watching it until like episode nine. Mm-hmm. Like until like Rui walked into Hina's apartment, I was like, God, I'm so tired of watching this. Because like all the original spice is gone, like it's yeah. just so. But once it gets like super pi- spicy near the peak, and like everyone's making out with everybody, and everyone's getting exposed, you're just like, oh my god, it's so much. It's spicy. Do you rate it? Can you rate it? Oh, was your half a bitty? Half a bitty? Half yeah. a bitty? Yeah, yeah. I'll say. Half I'll say. Bitty. I'll say eight bitties. Eight? But no, not eight. That's so many. Half a bitty. Yeah, because, I mean, it's good, but like I said, it's it's something funny. It's something that I watched it, not because I like I like the the romance of it. I mean, it's just funny how everything just progresses for mm-hmm. me. It, it's cool. But, yeah. um, God, no more Lloyd recommendations. No more Lloyd recommendations? Jesus Christ. Okay, well, he's going to be busy for a while. Yeah. Uh, so. so then, um, I was ex- I was talking to you earlier about uh, what we should watch um, for this upcoming week, yes. and I suggested we just do a a few two mo- two two full length movies and a a short film by the same director. I want to do a uh, Makoto Shinke. Uh huh. He uh, he's produced um, 
I, the three movies I want to do are Five Centimeters Per Second, The Garden of Words, and Your Name. Uh-huh. I've heard of Your Name. I heard that was pretty good. Well, Your Name's really popular. We we were going through the Wikipedia earlier, and we were talking about how it's basically like a the fourth uh, most successful movie in Japan ever. Oh, yeah. And it's like the only... An- the only animated movie that's not a Miyazaki film to make more than a hundred million dollars in Japan, yeah. and it's a romance anime, sort of. It's it's fantasy, romancy, high school yeah. age, but it, I don't know. It's real good. Um, I, I also want to do five centimeters per second because it was probably the first romance anime movie I ever watched. It I watched it in high school. I must have been like fourteen, fifteen years old, and I watched it in like two thousand seven. Okay, what's this one about though? Five centimeters per second. So basically. The the petals of uh, what are those pink trees in Japan? The pink trees. Pink trees. Oh, pink trees of uh, cherry blossoms. Yeah, yeah, cherry blossoms. Cherry blossoms fall at five centimeters per second. They fall. Yeah, like off the tree. Uh huh. And that's the name of the movie. Uh... But it's romancy. It, it it's about um this kid. We grow up with him in three separate parts, and we learn about like the women in his life at different stages in his life and how he becomes a man through the women in his life. So you life. want to watch something, some of these for next week? Yeah, so we're going to watch these three, five centimeters per second, The Garden of Words, and Your Name. Okay. Because I know you haven't watched any of these, have no. you? No. But, and this is like a really successful director. Like, like uh, Shinkei's a really, really big deal uh-huh. like in Japan and in the anime world. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down to watch it. And um, we were talking about, we'll upload a poll that'll run this week so that we can watch next week for the episode after next. So the next week's episode, we're going to watch these three movies. Mm-hmm. Yes. So this upcoming week, we're watching these three movies. The poll's coming out now. The poll's coming out now. What's on the poll? The poll is we're going to have Space Dandy. We want. I wanted to include Space Dandy because... We've already, we're already two out of three. Yeah. So basically, um, this is... The creator of Space Dandy is... Um, Another Watanabe project, and Watanabe is the guy that made both Samurai Champloo and Cowboy Bebop. Cowboy Bebop. So, and I haven't seen Space Dandy, so I thought that'd be a really good addition. I haven't seen it; might as well watch it. Uh, and else? then we can rate all three of them. Uh, <clears throat> we have Kill a Kill. Kill a Kill is a, a Studio Trigger film. We've discussed uh, Studio Trigger when we were talking about Gridman, mm-hmm. and Kill a Kill's maybe Studio Trigger's like uh, this was like their first big project when they went out on their own okay cool deal cool deal and then we have a classic death note everyone knows death well a lot of people know death note everyone our age our age knows what death note is yeah they do they do well that's also gonna be on the poll and hunter hunter just just the first arc there's way too many episodes yeah, we're not so, gonna watch everything yeah so we're just gonna it's like first the first arc. 37 episodes which is the hunter exam mm-hmm. so and all those seen none of these so, uh, well, have you seen Death Note? Yes, I've seen it. Oh, uh, okay. Well, anyways, they're all really good options. It'll be on the poll. Be sure to vote. Tell your yes. friends to vote. Vote. And uh, what else were we going to talk about? Do you want to go into our uh, donation fun? Yeah. You okay. want to go into our so donation fun? We're at I, the end of the month, guys. It's the end of the month. Hey, I'm, by the way, Nerd Down, it's already started. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm absolutely disappointed that not enough people... Both follow the, st- the three step process of mentioning us, Autism Society EP, and using the hashtag Nerds for Autism. Was way too complicated for it, all. It, it was way too complicated of a system. Keep listening though. <laughs> but um, so, what we did is we uh, compiled like likes and retweets and sum them up together so that we could donate more money because we do think it is a good cause. Mm-hmm. So, we're donating $30. To Autism Society EP. $30, yes, in total. Uh, thank you guys for um, the mentioning support. us. Thank you, uh, Karen. Thank you to uh, Good Night Game Podcast. VNA. Uh, Moy Divi- thank you at Mo- Moy Division. Uh, thank you, my girlfriend. Love you, babe. Thank you to Dominic Rodriguez. Uh, thank you to Dami Tommy. Uh, thank you to Orb Orbea. Thank you to uh, X Toast Adox. Thank you very much for Shout uh, to Toast for helping us help our community. Like we said, thirty dollars. We'll go ahead and uh, let you know how that goes. So the people we just mentioned are the people that uh, like actually did follow the rules and entered the giveaway. And um, so we are going. So we did a random number generator. Aldo, watch me. In all fairness, 
uh, to figure out who was going to win our giveaway, which is what, Aldo? Uh, it's going to be the Good Night Gamecast podcast. Well, the Good Night Gamecast podcast did shout us out. Thank you, guys. Uh, I was going through some of the recent episodes. We were talking about like how they have a Ghost of Tsushima. Oh, Sushi- <laughs> Ghost of Tsushima? <laughs> Ghost of yeah, Tsushima review. Great fucking game. I'm trying to fucking 100% it right now. They, they seem like cool guys. I'm sure I'll get around to the rest of the episodes. Thank you so much for participating and shouting us out. And, and that was probably the best written like tweet shout out we yeah did. thank you very much um and yeah and uh what was that shout out to good night gamecast shout out to good uh good night gamecast also uh we're gonna get in touch with them through email please um through twitter we're gonna dm them yeah dm them as well oh do they have an email on their twitter whatever we're gonna get in touch with you guys we're gonna ship you out your little giveaway what is it uh the giveaway oh yeah we have a giveaway it's a heat uh temperature changing my hero academia coffee mug pretty big coffee mug yeah it's pretty big uh who's on the cover uh it's all um, my yeah all my you can see him uh when he's scrawny when you don't when it's empty and as you pour your hot coffee into it it becomes all my with a heat temperature mug yeah and it changed he goes from skinny to big uh we are gonna be doing an are we going to be doing another giveaway or are we just going to be donating again? No, we're going to do another giveaway. Uh, we just, uh, you know, haven't figured out what we're going to get. But we're going we're gonna to do it the same. We're going to do it. I want to do it a sort of different way. So the next give the next um, donation a thon is going to be hashtag nerds for justice. Hashtag nerds for justice. Hashtag nerds for justice. And we are going to be donating um, to the national... Uh, Association for the Advancement of Colored People People Legal Defense Fund and uh, Legal Defense and Education Fund. Um, Meaning? They they are trying to cover legal fees for people that are... uh, Get arrested. People that get on their arrest. They're doing civil demonstrations. Like, people that are fighting for the cause... Not fighting for the cause, but demonstrating for the cause... Uh, flexing their First Amendment right to protest and uh, getting if, wrongfully arrested. Getting wrongfully arrested is the point I'm trying to make. Mm-hmm. So shout out to the NAACP. Um, so what I want for people to participate is just use the hashtags Nerds for Justice. Just mention us at um, what's our Twitter? <laughs> at Between Nerds. At Between Nerds, and just say uh, one thing positive about the NAACP. Cool. That's it. Let's, it's, there were too many ats and the hashtag last time. Two ats and a hashtag is too much, I guess. So just hashtag. And then one nice thing about NAACP and please mention us. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, so that's going to be September. All of September. All of September. We'll we're work on a giveaway. We won't going to say. It's going to be a surprise. It's not going to be a mug again. It's going to be something cool, though. Yeah, it's going to be something cooler. So then. Um, but we need you guys to mention us, please. As far as, like, just other nerd shit going on with me, uh, Season 3 of Regrets Go came out two days ago. I stayed home last night since you were hanging out with your girlfriend and didn't want to be my friend uh, and watched nine episodes of Season 3 of Regrets Go. It's fucking spicy. It's so good. If, if you don't know anything about Regrets Go, it's, an, it's a Netflix-owned anime series that's about what it's like to be in your mid-20s and be a working professional. Like, it's just yeah. about a little red panda girl going to her shitty accounting job that she can't stand and just trying to get through being an adult. It's, it's for me, it's too, uh, too real almost. Uh, <laughs> you can't even enjoy it. Cause yeah, it's, cause it's, like, fuck man, it's like, I'm going through this. What do I want to watch? This and it's funny cause it's so dude. cartoony looking. Cause yeah, all the characters so are like super cartoony animals. Yeah. But and uh, it's just so clunky, not clunky. It's, it's a sweet animation, but it's just so like, cartoony like you said and yeah like i said it's too relatable it'll just depress you like just thinking about just (laughs) waking up for work tomorrow so then um oh and i've been playing Oh again shout out to game shout out to game vault on montana and wedgwood nice uh they're one of i think there's the only shop i know of on the east side that's open but they're they're trying to play it safe you know file yeah follow, follow, follow the fire code um, they have tables spread far apart. Everyone's wearing a mask, but they're they're using uh, the the restaurant um, 
tactic where like if you have food in front of you you can take your mask off to eat mm-hmm. or drink which at this point I don't fucking know man I don't know at least they're fi- following some sort of guidelines I mean if I were you I would just eat before keep my fucking mask on the whole time shout out to t- yeah that's what, exactly what I did shout out to Texas our infection rate's finally down to 16% yeah 16 16- <laughs> oh my god <laughs> uh, but um with that being honestly this week my girlfriend got tested got tested for antibodies tested it <laughs> she, for COVID antibodies she tested negative for being like actively sick but it turns out she did test positive for having antibodies which means both me and her were probably asymptomatic at some point already like that's weird you get what I'm saying and like compared to like when Lloyd talks about when he actively got sick like he was big sick for yeah. a while how much was her test her health insurance f- covered it. She um, said it would have been only fi- it was only going to be fifty bucks without it, which isn't that bad. But like, uh, her co- her health insurance entirely covered it. Where at? Oh uh, yeah, 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 I know. Um, where I'm at. Maltwood, right up here yeah. on the east side. So shout out to Game Vault, I guess. I'm glad you're making people wear masks, even though one of your employees is wearing a Blue Lives Matter mask. Oh, by the way, I wanted to do a, a shout out to uh, Baked Enough. It's a bakery. Uh, uh, they did my girlfriend's cake for her birthday. Really fucking good. It's a local, it's a local uh, uh, place. Follow them on uh, IG on Instagram. It's a uh, at baked enough. Uh, you're looking it up right now. It's pretty good. Is uh, it? Where, yeah. what, 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 what streets are that? Uh, it's not. It's not a street. You pretty much hit them up. It's pretty much she's doing off her business. Oh, of, just like on demand. Uh, of yeah, on demand. Yeah. Oh, okay. She does pretty sweet cakes. Yeah. Cool. Shout out to Chico's Tacos. Chicago Tacos. Zero customer service for 30 years. Still oh, in business. I love it. I love Still it. Still in business. Don't change. Uh, what else, man? What else you got? I think that's it, bro. Shit. We met, we, Lloyd, Lloyd Parker's still a part of the cast. No one's been kicked out of anything. He's just busy and got his own adult shit going on. Yeah, you get he's going to be back as long as we figure out how to do it. We'll, we'll, we're we're going to Zoom record him something we can figure something out but right now he's pretty busy hopefully he you know stays focused Lloyd please stay focused and then whenever you're ready we can start jumping on some other episodes thank you guys thank you guys please follow us Fuck. at Between Nerds what's our email send us email send us questions send us advice tell us our opinions are garbage what's our email our email is at be- I mean between nerds podcast at gmail.com be sure to leave us a five star review on apple on on, on apple podcast apple podcast please subscribe uh on spotify please subscribe they don't have a rating system on spotify i think that's no i don't know i'm we're coming up we're gonna be doing uh something as well what was it pandora we're gonna put our shit on pandora as well oh are we uh, good for us yeah (laughs) so you know some production value and and for real for real like we do want this to be a community driven podcast like we do the poll because we want y'all's opinion we want you actively using the podcast just tell us anything talk to us throughout the day we just want to be interacting with y'all and um i guess that's it and uh, I also wanted to mention that, I mean, unfortunately, because of the whole COVID thing, we also want to, you know, give shout outs to local local businesses that we that we enjoy and hopefully at some point get their points of view on anime if they have any opinion on anime and see if we can do episodes with that as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. This has been Between Nerds. Thank you. Thank you, guys.